whatever I have discussed with regard to Canada, okay, the Canadian landscape, the history of Canada, Canadian literature, as well as I have introduced you to Canadian uh, land, the Canada as a land and the culture of uh, Canada. Okay, we have discussed all those things. And we have also discussed the aspect of survival, Nordicity, garrison mentality. See, bring uh, all these concepts into your mind now. So we, this is going to be a Canadian poem, right? We are going to deal with a Canadian poem. So we have to uh, understand this poem from all these perspectives, the concepts we have discussed. And uh, with keeping in mind the Canadian landscape, right? The harsh uh, nature of the Canadian landscape, as well as the exotic Canadian landscape. Keep in mind we read this poem while we discuss this poem, right? Bushed by Earl Bonnie. Bushed by Earl Bunny. Okay, I want someone to read the text. I'll share the text with you. If you can see the screen, uh, give me a thumbs up. Now, can you see the text? One of you can read the entire poem. Bushed by Earl Bunny. Bushed by Earl Bunny. He, invent he invented, sir. Yeah. He invented a rainbow, but lightning struck it, shattered it into the lake lap of a mountain. So big his mind. Sorry, sorry. Let's. Yeah. Is it, is so it big his mind. Yes, sir. So big his mind slowed when he look, looked at it. Yet he built a shack on the shore, learned to roast porcupine belly, and wore the quills on his hat band. At first he was good at the dawn, whether it looked bright as wood, columbine, or was only a first moth in a flannel of storm. But he found the mountain was clearly alive, with messages whistling down. Every hot morning boomed proclamations at noon and spread out the white board of gold before falling asleep on its feet at shutdown, sundown. When he tried his eyes on the lake, or sprays would fall like Valkyries choosing the cut throat. He took then to waiting till the night smoke rose from the boil of the sunset. But the moon called unknown totems out of the lake show. Owls in the beard, dusky woods dried him. Horned third sedras circled his swamps and toasted their antlers up to the shutters. Then he knew though the mountains slept, the winds were sh shaping its peak to an arrow arrowhead poised. Mm. But by now, But by now, he could only bore himself in and wait for the great flint to come singing into his heart. Right. Thank you. Kevin, Kevin Dunn? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Most, uh, <clears throat> what do you understand? You are introduced to a rainbow, right? In the abruptly, there's a rainbow, but something uh, struck it down, but lightning struck it shattered it into the lap clip of a mountain so big his mind slowed when he looked at it. See, the poem uh, starts with a disturbing okay, note. Uh, so I want you to ask uh, questions regarding nature. Uh, you have a man here, okay? Just a man is introduced and the man is a representation. Uh, it's symbolic of all the humanity, all men and women and a man is just stranded in a beach. Uh, what he thinks of himself and what he thinks about nature. What is your uh, 
you what are the views you have about nature can can you just you can talk and you can also chat in the chat box uh, what do you think of nature what is your maybe what are the views you have of nature i want what i want your response uh, on nature man versus nature and also uh, in terms of nature what what are the views you have of man versus nature so mm. when we spend time with nature we feel some this, this is coming sir yes pa yes sir when we feel, uh, when we spend uh, time with nature we feel some peace inside ourselves and uh, yeah, you feel some uh, peace, we, right? we come fresh and energetic to do some things and yeah, yeah. we will have some confidence and positive uh, vibes inside our ourselves mm, you feel refreshing when you go out and see the beauty of nature the scenic beauty and it's so refreshing and it is beautiful so calm soothing okay anything else anything else uh, others uh, the moment you think of nature what comes to your mind and what you experience in the lap of nature anything that comes to your mind may both positive as well as negative i want those dual aspects it is dual you have to understand what are those nature always uh, works in duality it has its dual okay nature nature has the dual qualities and what are those <laughs> this is uh, uh, maybe you have a very bright picture of nature right you go to a park you go for a uh, hill station right and you enjoy nature natural wealth and the good air the fresh air the beautiful scenes the mountains the rivers lakes birds and animals all those things are beautiful okay beautiful to see and experience and enjoy but anything more anything more and man is always trying to control nature here you can see this man is trying to build his own rainbow right a rainbow is metaphoric right he is building building his own life man is building his own life in this world in earth maybe he uh, is trying to construct his own world on earth and but nature uh, is always nature and man are always at odds right at extremes man is trying to build his own world right his life in terms of human dictates in terms of human cultures okay he builds his own world yeah right yet he build a shack on the shore we have this line in the next stanza Yet he built a shack. It just a hut, uh, a hut or a cabin. The shack means a hut or a cabin. He builds a hut or a cabin on the shore. Learn to roast porcupine belly. What's a porcupine? What's a porcupine? It's an animal. What's a porcupine? Mulla mundi sir. Ah, mulla mundi. Mulla mulla ar kulla. and uh, even it is difficult to catch him and even uh, other animals uh, will be uh, they will be afraid to go near it mulla mandri and mullu kutti so he is able to roast that right and eat it uh, over the quills quills na and the usi usi a irukum and the mullu adha quills on his hat band and that shows uh, his survival skills he is able to survive in that okay uh, bush landscape he was able to survive amidst the uh, uh, all the odds or all the extremes of nature he is able to survive that shows his survival skill at first he was out with the dawn whether it yellowed bright as wood columbine uh, 
Columbine, uh, Columbine is a kind of uh, wood Columbine uh, uh, purplish flowers, or was only a first moth, moth in a flannel of storm, but he found the mountain was clearly alive, sent messages whizzing down every hot morning. See all those beautiful descriptions of nature, boom proclamations at noon, and spread out a white garner goat, goat is a symbol of security before uh, falling asleep on its feet at sundown, right? So he's, he's uh, giving a picture of how he was able to survive. A man is stranded on the beach and he is able to survive, experience nature, as well as with all those survival skills, the aspect of survival, Margaret that would survival, you can bring it, how uh, he's able to survive in that harsh Canadian landscape, right? Nature is not only beautiful, but it is also extreme, extreme in the sense it, it has its own uh, extreme side, the dual side of nature. Can anyone say more about the extreme, uh, the dual nature of uh, nature uh, in that sense? What are those negative things associated with nature? Nature is not always sweet and comforting, calm. You should also understand that nature is also terrible, as we see. Uh, in the aspect of survival, Margaret Atwood's uh, survival, as well as many of the Canadian writers who uh, had this experience of fear and isolation. He's experiencing that fear and isolation in this Canadian landscape. So a kind of insanity he's experiencing because of the fear, isolation in an alien land like Canada. So the environment also feels his insanity, right? Is psyche the Canadian psyche and imagination is influenced by okay the environment right the environment the Canadian environment the harsh environment can can you say more about that harsh side of nature what are those maybe the harsh winter here then See, I'm asking you generally the harsh uh, duality of nature here. What is the harsh side of nature? Mountains, rivers, in the environment with nature, right? You have a peaceful, calm life, enjoy the cool breeze, all those things are there, right? You enjoy the rising sun, the sunset. All those things are beautiful. What are those negative aspects? Negative, I'm asking you that. What are those? Whatever. What, all the natural process that happens. Can you respond? In the context of Canada, as well as I'm asking you generally. Whatever happening around us, think of that and respond. Yeah, very good. 114. Who is 114? Earthquake. <coughs> okay, storm, volcanic eruption, tsunami. It, when you type it, please tell me that you're typing. Uh, uh, when I'm talking, uh, sometimes I'm distracted. Uh, every now and then I cannot go and check the chat, chat box. So let me know when if you are typing <coughs> hurricane, okay, earthquake, flood. Uh, good, Genesis, tornado. See, all these things are part of nature, right? This is also the terrible side of nature that you have to understand, come in terms with. Man always thinks that he can control nature, right? He dominates nature, of course, he dominates nature, he controls nature, but nature can never be controlled. It cannot be controlled, right? We are insignificant, right? In front of nature's power. You have to understand the extremes of nature. You cannot play with nature. Nature has its even corona is part of nature's own cycle. Sometimes it happens. You cannot stop it. Maybe it, it, it has to it has to leave okay over a period of time. It naturally it has to come to an end. Or of course, man is trying to uh, man is trying to invent something. Uh, maybe still nature's process is complex. It is trying to uh, do his job at a very fast rate, right? 
sometimes we have to come in terms with such realities and of course man is able to control nature to a certain extent it is possible but he cannot entirely control nature it is sometimes it is out of his hands it's not possible right so all the natural as you said all these things that were fled and hurricane tornado and even diseases sometimes it is part of nature's cycle you have to understand and it, it has its own way to mend uh, and uh, uh, recycle or uh, um, okay it, it it brings a kind of balance in nature if there is some imbalance in nature it it tries to uh, reduce that okay and make a balance so in eco criticism next year you will be studying two important terms um, anthropocentric ecocentric we are just part of nature that realization is ecocentric anthropocentric means man centered man thinks that he is the center of the world he can control everything but we are so minute we are so insignificant in nature's cycle in nature's web of life in the web of life we are just part of it sometimes if nature needs us it will keep us sometimes we may be just a simple uh, 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 one uh, kit from the meteor will destroy right will destroy us just the meteor falls on the earth then we will be destroyed an earthquake just a small shake of the earth can destroy all of us so you have to think in that terms also the the enormity of nature uh, the extremeness of nature right you have to understand that also right nature has its own duality and this title bush itself is dual right you have to understand bush the experienced in the bush landscape right in the wilderness or bush defeated the man is defeated in the bush means defeated the man is defeated in the wilderness it can mean both so you have to understand that right anything more to say right so when he tried his eyes on the lake or sprays or sprays is i think it's a kind of bird that uh, eats fish and would fail like valkyries valkyries is uh, they fall like valkyries they are mythical beings uh, valkyries uh, they fall like valkyries choosing the cutthroat he took them to waiting till the night smoke rose from the boil of the sunset but the moon carved unknown totems okay unknown totems uh out of the lake show owls in the bird dusky woods they ride it in moose horns sedas sedas the uh, pine trees the seda family trees sedas the coniferous trees okay coniferous trees circled the swamps and tossed their antlers antlers the branch like an antlers up to the stars when he knew though the mountain slept the winds were shaping its peak to an arrow head okay and he is trying to build a hut and live there but suddenly it is struck and uh see that is the extremeness of nature the extremity of nature see walden uh, you know walden thoros walden he uh, lived in massachusetts he lived in the forest deep into the forest he went there in the walden near the walden pond he just built a hut and he lived there for two years two months and two days that's an experiment a kind of experiment living with nature living uh, with simple means right with simple living the kind of simple living he had with nature and he was so happy about it it brought him a lot of friends and living in communion with nature is so beautiful right so calming soothing for him but that is possible for uh, walden thoros uh, in the walden pond by thoro experimented that Uh, living with nature you call this transcendentalism that's aspect of transcendentalism associated with uh thoreau's experiments so his philosophy is trans- transcendentalism living in one with nature okay uh, understanding that oneness of human beings and nature with all those oneness he wanted to convey right uh, that's an experiment that's a simple experiment but he was able to do that but it is not always see a man building a 
cut in the mountains okay sometimes it is struck by the uh, lightning see that, that kind of uh, here it is a, it is a kind of an opposite uh, okay uh, picture given here whatever man thinks he cannot do right he wanted to build he wanted to build maybe all those human cultures materialism right human cultures uh, are always nowadays you can see all those cultures the mainstream culture the human culture is materialistic culture right all those things we are building cultures based on our own perception of the world right for our materialistic gain are we building cultures uh, are we building cultures that that uh, are in line with nature or are we able to live a life with nature in close contact with nature no we are not doing that maybe as uh, we have discussed earlier in many of the poems indigenous people have okay their own wisdom of dealing with nature and they have gained this wisdom through so much <clears throat> so many years of experience in communion with nature right is the human culture today uh, the civilization that we talk about is it is it uh, nature maybe accommodating nature i'm asking this question can you respond are we uh, living a life right accommodating rights of nature are we able to do that no right but by now he could only bar himself in and wait for the great flint to come singing into his heart the great flint the spark right a piece of rock that spark to come singing into his heart right see you can see all his dream is shattered in the beginning uh, few lines you can understand is dream such likewise humanity's dreams are shattered maybe nature can do that within a few seconds you can, your, all your dreams all your cultures all the civilization that you have built can be shattered within a few minutes nature has that power to do nature can kill right what is your response uh, for the human cultures the civilization that what that we are building it is always man centered that is what i want to say human centered whatever we are building we are giving importance to us humans and everything is built based on our needs our uh, 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 <clears throat> material gain commodification everything is seen based on its utility value right we are building everything for us we are the center of the world we think like that but according to ecology the ecological web of life we are just part of it you have to understand that reality that reality should struck us right nature can easily struck us only when we realize that we are just a small insignificant part of nature only if we realize that only if we that kind that kind of attitude we can <coughs> respect we will have that uh, we will gain respect uh, for nature right we will respect nature and we will understand the duality of nature you have to understand the duality of nature nature is not always sweet and uh, welcoming and uh, bright and sunny right nature is also cruel at times nature is also cruel we are seeing that nature can also kill so you have to understand that too and uh, what is this darwin's have you heard of darwin's uh, theory of evolution what is the darwin's theory of evolution can anyone say it hmm? what is darwin's uh, theory of evolution the theory of evolution survival of the fittest who is 
Varshini, very good, Varshini. Survival of the fittest. You can see here. He is able to, if he is survival of the fittest, if he is fit, he will survive. If he is able to adapt to nature, he will survive. Survival of the fittest. That means theory of evolution. Right? Man thinks that he can control nature, but he cannot. If he is able to survive, that is why this aspect of survival, you can relate with that, the Canadian aspect of survival, surviving in Canada, surviving in the harsh landscape, surviving in the harsh bush landscape. Sometimes you should not be bushed or defeated, right? It happens, it may happen sometimes. See that all not all the people are successful in that, right? But the survival of the fittest, survival of the fittest. So that is why you can see in the first few stances, he is able to survive with the survival skills he posts about it, right? Because of the uh, quills that he preserves, the quills, uh, the spine, uh, sharp spines that he preserves, right? There's a word lay clap, right? Lay clap means that uh, calm uh, side of nature, right? So the calm life he is able to live in nature. That is what this lake lap means. The lake lap of a mountain. The calm life is leading in the wilderness. The man. Okay. In the man is itself is a metaphor of uh, for humanity. That man is a representation of all humanity. Right? You have to understand man in such terms. <clears throat> but he thinks that he has uh, established a perfect life. He thinks that he has established a perfect life. Man always thinks in the civilization he creates, the cultures he has created. He thinks that he has created a perfect life, but that perfect life will at once crumble. It will crumble immediately. Suddenly, at any moment, it can crumble. So that is why you have to respect nature. You have to understand the extremities of nature and but human beings uh, will become, they become insane. That insanity develops, the fear and isolation develops in the Canadian landscape, in the experience of the, such an environment, right? So that naturally it develops, but still one who survives, that's a survival of the fittest, will survive, right? Suddenly, some catastrophe may hit, like the lightning, and will destroy the civilization, destroy the human cultures. So we have to build human cultures that are, okay, that are uh, in line with nature, natural life, right? We have to have some close contact with nature, right? That is how we should develop our human cultures. Maybe at least we should try to uh, live a life in close contact with nature. Maybe we can slowly change our wish. So, we are showing indifference, but we are showing indifference. That is what all these human cultures are about today. So, man may think that he, because he has built a perfect life in the material world, right? In the globalized world that we talk in all these economic terms, but in front of nature, in front of the extremities, the duality of nature, we are nothing. We have to understand that reality. His dreams are shattered before his eyes. That is why with that flint, it ends, right? The flint, uh, but by now he could only uh, bar himself in and wait. He can wait and just watch for the great flint to come singing in his heart, right? He is alone, the man is alone in the wilderness, right? He is experiencing a perfect life. He has Things that he has built a perfect life, but suddenly it crumbles. That is how our cultures, whatever we are built, may crumble. So understand nature, the duality of nature, and survive. The survival aspect is very important. Right. Any any clarifications? Uh, any doubts? Would you like to contribute more about uh, the aspect of survival, survival in the wilderness? Right, you have to understand this. Wilderness, the bush. What is the, what did I tell you about the word bush? 
bushed means the dual dual nature of uh, uh, nature is shown here bushed it has two okay meaning what is that bush means you cannot uh, you have a great experience in the wilderness but also you can be bushed in the wilderness that is defeated in the wilderness. both are possible that is why the title itself is dual right it has duality in the bush so that is why you have to understand earl burney's poem from the aspect of uh, the canadian context from the canadian context the canadian landscape right you can uh, post your questions in the chat box i think with this uh, we will conclude uh, for your first internal you have all these poems whatever i have taught you uh, till bush seriya so, yeah, remaining poems la vittrenga nadathadha la vittrenga seriya you cannot you need not study uh, unit 2 la and the journey to the interior varad journey to the interior you will have it for your next test a uh, marble that would journey to the interior it's not there for your test 1 okay in all these poems from uh the beginning almost uh, unit 1 except one or two poems till bust you will have for your test one and uh uh i'll just share the screenshot of what are the portions for peeping man's portion i think survival and uh roughing it in the bush mustangla other end of survival and roughing it in the bush punchapa survival roughing it in the bush by atwood and susanna moody is roughing it in the bush will be chat and me over uh, survival in progress roughing it in the bush completed done right? so those two texts from unit 2 and uh, all these poems whatever i have taught you right i will also post the <laughs> portions for your unit test 1 sorry hmm? so concentrate on that text also get to know generally about canada canadian literature and i have given you an introduction and also uh, read about australia and australian literature as well maybe one or two general questions maybe yeah right no more questions is Hey, pa. We will conclude with this. Uh, I'll end the class. We will meet in the next class. There'll be all the best for your exams. Probably we will be meeting after uh, your exams. Okay. All the best for your exams. Do well. Prepare well. If you have any doubts, you can just WhatsApp me. Maybe when I have time, I will try to reply you. Uh, you can also call me anytime. Hope I have covered most of the texts. We have discussed most of the texts. only those study those texts which we have discussed in class that's it right see you uh meet you in the next class thank you sir